Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from deep in the heart of Texas. More specifically, we are in Dallas, Texas. And uh, as I travel the country, as I travel the tourist landscape, I think one important part of the tourist landscape is the presidential library. These are, I don't really know why they, honestly, I don't know why they call them libraries. There probably is a library, a private library, but to the tourist that is coming to visit, they are museums that, that talk about the life of a president, and, you know, and talk about the president too, also kind of encapsulates the uh, the era in which that particular president was president. I visited, of course, the Lincoln, um, the Lincoln Presidential Library, probably my favorite, but also I've been to the LBJ, I've been to Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon, Bill Clinton, I think that's it. I think if I'm missing any, leave a comment in the comment section. And if you know of any good ones that I haven't been to, leave a comment in the comment section. But uh, anyway, that brings us to today, where we are here in front of the George W. Bush Presidential Library here in Dallas, Texas. So uh, when we, I've been wanting to go here for a while. All the presidential libraries were closed down during the pandemic, and they were kind of slow to open up, so I'm very happy that this is open up so I can finally uh, go through here and uh, view the, the historicness of uh, George W. Bush's presidential term. Now, when I go into these museums, these presidential museums, I definitely like to look at it with a, um, with a historical perspective. Um, I like to leave partisan politics at the door you know the, the, you know right now you know when, when someone is president you know you get very emotional very invested in, in what's do what the, what they're doing what's happening and you have forms of very strong opinions but as far as um you know presidents of the past i like to kind of look at it with an even mind a a, a separated mind you 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 have not you're not in the era where all this stuff is happening so you kind of take a step back and know it's okay to still disagree with stuff to still regret stuff, to still wish things didn't happen. But it's interesting to take a more historical look at it rather than like a, a, a charged partisan look at it. So I know some of you may, may, may be fans of George W. Bush. Some of you may dislike George W. Bush. But I think together we can all enjoy this museum. So please follow me. So we head up to the uh, Presidential Museum Library. You see the little little fountain there. Oh, where'd the fountain go? There was a fountain there just a second ago. It vanished. Oh, what happened? Guess uh, guess it ran out of uh, ran out of water for the day. It's here at this booth with the giant presidential seal over the top. And in the hallway here is gifts given to George W. Bush from uh, people around the world as he traveled. Some items in here, they have a, a sword. But uh, what I think is interesting is this, this ship right here. This is from Lithuania. It's a ship made out of uh, silver and amber. Now you would think, that is a very valuable ship, and it is. But uh, do you know what the most valuable ship of all is? It's friendship. Here are gifts from the American people. So I guess these are uh, these are gifts from people in the United States. You can see a couple couple more swords there. Here's gifts from Africa, and another sword. I don't know. Uh, George W. Bush must have the world's largest sword collection. I wonder if he like goes to the mall and goes to the uh, store and buys katanas. Just imagine George W. Bush with a big sword room. There's gifts from people in the Middle East. And uh, it does not look like they gave him a sword. They did, however, give him this, uh, this dagger. Oh, look up here. In the ceiling, there's different people. I don't know if these are just different hardworking Americans. Oh, that one just, that doctor just vanished. There's a baseball guy there, cracking a, cracking a home run. Ballerina. So we head into here to the exhibit. 
gallery. It says my background leaves more than an accent. It leaves an outlook, optimistic, impatient with pretense, confident that people can chart their own course. Some of the early days of George W. Bush when he met Laura Bush. There's his twin daughters there. Talks about his, uh, his religion. Here's some of the campaign materials. So the campaign buttons down there. Bush Cheney. I remember when uh, when Dick Cheney when Dick Cheney was chosen the vice president. People said that he was that he was too old that he was too old to, to assume the role of vice president. But he's actually he's actually still alive, still alive. All this uh, this 22 years later. Of course, his nickname. W. His father's name was also George Bush, so he needed something to distinguish himself, so he relied on the W. Some more buttons and banners here. There's uh, some Laura Bush button there. This here gives the timeline of the very controversial election in which George W. Bush won eventually, but uh, took until December. You can see the newspaper there, Victory for Bush. The election was in November. It took over a month to declare a winner because it was so incredibly close. They had a very difficult time. It had to go to the Supreme Court for a final decision. There was a lot of controversy in Florida about the votes. They were, I think, 2,000 votes apart, which is incredibly close. I remember this was shocking at the time that uh, we went this long without a without a winner. Um, you know, the, 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 the previous several elections had been very kind of cut and dry, but uh, this one was so close and it ended up, uh, ended up going on forever. They were just waiting for the results. And here's some of the uh, the controversial hanging chads from uh, from Florida. I know if you look closely, one of the controversies was that uh, you see the punch cards there. So the first one points at that hole. It says George W. Bush, and then you go down and you notice that the next one right underneath it it says Al Gore and uh, Joe Lieberman. But if you look at this, it's not actually the second punch hole. You would punch the top hole if you wanted George Bush. If you punch the second hole, that would not cast a vote for Al Gore. That would actually cast a vote for Pat Buchanan. So I think there was some controversy in the belief that a significant amount of people may have accidentally voted for Pat Buchanan when they meant to vote for Al Gore. Here's the original credentials for election night, November 7th, 2000. These were never used. The uh, because the election night celebration was basically canceled because they did not have a winner. I guess this is the wheel of how tax relief helps small businesses grow, adopt new technology, innovate new products, build new facilities, expand markets, create jobs, and encourage new investors. It's an interactive screen here. It says watch President which is tax cuts, build prosperity. Let's see how this works. Okay, welcome to your hometown, Prosper City. President Bush's tax cuts have benefited our citizens. What do you want to do with tax savings? Touch a building. Um, let's, uh, let's see uh, single workers. Oh, single workers says, uh, your job doesn't pay well or use your skills because of President Bush's tax cuts and their economic stimulation, you have a little extra money. Touch the text boxes from some ideas what you can do with it. Oh, okay, you have more disposable income there. Oh, you can go, go to the deli, go to the deli and get a sandwich. Here's George W. Bush's Texas Ranger boots. He actually owned the Texas Rangers baseball team. This is the no child left behind uh, section here. Pretty pretty controversial change in how education was handled, where uh, schools were uh, basically rewarded monetarily with high test scores. Um, a lot of people have very strong opinions on how this worked, and um, I think I believe it actually is gone now. They have, they got rid of uh, of no child left behind. I do remember when my son going to school. 
and uh, having to having to study you know towards the test the whole class would be towards the uh, those those tests at the end of the year that uh, granted how much money the school was given I don't know I mean I don't, it's a very complicated subject I always thought that maybe schools with poor performance needed more money to help uh, help teach their kids better I don't know it's just a diff different ways to look at it to do what was right for America from this day forward all students will have a better chance to learn to excel and to live out their dreams before No Child Left Behind, we really talked only about money. How much do we spend? Now we talk about how much do kids know? And we're gonna hold ourselves. I have a little reading nook next to the No Child Left Behind section. She can get a book from over here and curl up next to this bronze cat and uh, read a book. Here's a signed print of the very hungry caterpillar gifted to uh, Laura Bush at the White House Easter Egg Hunt by the author uh, Eric Carle. Here's George W. Bush's baseball collection. Apparently, he was owning a baseball team. He was a huge fan of the sport of baseball. Have his uh, bat here. Oh, that was given to him by the National Baseball Hall of Fame on March 30th, 2001. With all the autographs. Then he has a collection of autographed baseballs there. I was trying to see read all these signatures they're a little hard to read i think i saw yeah down here this one signed by joe dimaggio but all yeah i guess these were all gifts to uh to president bush of course it's impossible to talk about the george w bush presidency without talking about the 9 11 attacks there on both the world trade center and the pentagon down here we see where George W. Bush was first told about the 9-11 attack. He was reading a book to school children when an aide came and whispered in his ear. Over here we have some actual steel beams from the World Trade Center after the 9-11 attack. And then on this wall back here, the names of all the people who lost their lives in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. These here are condolence letters colored by uh, people from around the world sending their message to the United States after the horrible uh, terrorist attacks. In this case, we have the, the uh, U.S. flag that was flying over the White House on September 11th. This is the telephone that George W. Bush was using that day for his communications. And then we have the uh, rough draft right there and the speech notes that uh, he gave in his first announcement after the attack. You can see some corrections there, some different, uh, different words crossed out and replaced. And this is, this is pretty amazing right here. This is the uh, bullhorn used by George W. Bush on uh, September 14th when he visited Ground Zero where the towers had fallen and made his uh, his iconic announcement to the people of America, to the people of the world using that bullhorn. Here's the NYPD jacket given to uh, George Bush after 9-11 and then this is the baseball that he threw out at the uh, World Series that year. Up here on this board, it talks about fighting the global war on terror. You can see all the different terrorist attacks that uh, have occurred around the globe. Of course, you can see the ones here, in the United States, the Twin Towers, the, uh, the Pentagon there. And uh, yeah, it actually, you can see a global issue as it occurred. All around, uh, all around the world. Some of the things George Bush did in order to attempt to fight terrorism, the U.S. Patriot Act of 2001. I remember back when that occurred, it was very, very controversial. You know, talk about limiting certain freedoms in order to uh, help seek out terrorists. Um, yeah, it was very, very controversial. Very, people had very, very strong feelings about the Patriot Act. They are the most wanted terrorists there 
course, obviously, number one, Osama bin Laden, the uh, head of Al-Qaeda. This table over here says, uh, select a country. We'll choose Iraq. Military action. The flow chart there. It's the wanted poster for Saddam Hussein there. There's an Iraqi newspaper showing the statues of Saddam Hussein being toppled in Iraq. And then down here is actual piece of a Saddam Hussein statue. That's the metal from the statue. And this is a handgun that one time belonged to uh, Saddam Hussein. He had that on his person when he was captured. So wow, that actually is pretty crazy thinking that belonged to Saddam Hussein. And down here we see these playing cards. These would be carried by US soldiers so that they could identify different, uh, different members of the Iraqi government. You could see the ace there being Saddam Hussein. And then uh, there's different, uh, different people that worked underneath him. There's some scissors from the ribbon cutting of the new uh, US Embassy in Afghanistan after uh, or after America had uh, taken control of the country during the Afghan war. There is a ballot. It was the first multi-person ballot in 50 years. You see a ton of candidates there on, uh, on the ballot. This globe here shows how many democracies there are in the world. This is in 2008. Which, which of these countries were democracies. So apparently in 1950, there's only 22 democracies, so we'll hit that. Oh, let me see. Fewer democracies in the world, a few in South America, of course the United States and uh, Canada there. Here is George W. Bush's personal Bible, of course known, known to be very religious and talk openly um, about his religion and praying. And here we step into the Oval Office. Yeah, a lot of the presidential libraries will have different Oval Office setups. Presidents would have their unique touches to the Oval Office. They're doing some photo sh photos here for people sitting behind George W. Bush's desk. Take a quick picture right here. Right. <laughs> Stay like that. I'll go in three, two, one. Take a look at the desk here. Can I see? Oh yeah, all this, all his contacts there in the phone. That's Bolton. He was the, uh, he was the ambassador to the, the United Nations, I believe. There's a little intercom button there. Here's his dog, Spot right here. Apparently Spot was actually the offspring of Millie, who was uh, his father, George H.W. Bush's dog. And then you have his daughters here with his uh, Scottish Terrier, Barney. So here are the two Scottish Terriers. They owned uh, Miss Barney and Mrs. Beasley. Play a game of Barney's White House here. It says help Barney find his ball and get to bed. So hit the ball there. President Bush invited T-ball teams to compete on the South Lawn. T-ball teaches kids about sports and teamwork. So can you hit the ball for a biscuit? There we go. Oh, I want a biscuit, yay. One biscuit, how many biscuits do I need to collect? Oh, each year First Lady uh, decides how to decorate for Christmas tree in the blue room. Now it's your turn. Drag the decorations to the tree. Uh, like some candy canes on the tree. Some beautiful uh, ornaments there. The star there. And uh, come on, give me a biscuit. Yes, got another biscuit. All right. What's up next? Barney's in the press briefing room. Press briefing rooms where important announcements are made. You get a biscuit. Say what I like to do. Um, I don't really like playing soccer. Don't really like eating bones, but I do like to sleep. Oh, I got another biscuit. 
Here's the Oval Office where President Bush is hard at work. Uh, match the presidents to get the biscuit. Oh, okay, so we're playing a matching game? Okay, that's Lincoln. That's Washington. Oh, Washington was right here. There we go. Um, that's uh, uh, Dwight Eisenhower. Oh, that's Lincoln. Let's go again, Lincoln. And then this has to be Eisenhower. Yay, presidential dog biscuits. Oh, Barney's White House Kitchen. Drag to the plate to make a sandwich. So we want some bread, some honey, and some peanut butter. A bread, honey, and peanut butter sandwich there. It's a chef that makes uh, Bush's meal. I guess he loves a good honey and, and peanut butter uh, sandwich. Oh, oh, we're celebrating Hanukkah now. Oh, that President Bush was the first president to light a menorah for Hanukkah. All right, drag the candles to the menorah. There we go. Oh. Celebrating Hanukkah at the White House with all the other dogs and cats. There we go. You get a biscuit for celebrating Hanukkah. Good job, you collected six dog biscuits. You deserve a nap. Over here we have Barney and Miss Beasley's uh, food dishes. And there is a volleyball that they popped because they were being a little too rough with it. Here's some authentic White House Easter eggs. They do a Easter egg hunt on the uh, lawn of the White House. There's some eggs to commemorate the occasion. Here's a chair that Pope Benedict sat in when he visited the White House. And there we have a, uh, a Texas Longhorn statue that Bush had in the dining room. Here we have the podium from the Rose Garden. There's some uniforms from Air Force One, it's George and Laura's Air Force One jackets. Oh, and there's just a chunk, chunk of the plane presented to George Bush. Of course, it's a president's job to congratulate winning sports teams. Here's some of the, uh, the balls in those dedication ceremonies, the Little League softball World Series champions. This is the 2006 Major League Soccer Cup champions, 2005 NCAA football, and 2005 NCAA women's basketball champions. And there we have the Olympic torch from the 2002 Winter Olympics. Here are letters that are correspondences between <laughs> between uh, Bono and, and George Bush. Apparently, when George Bush writes a letter to, to Bono, he starts with, Yo, Bono! And then Bono says, hey Prez, yo Bush. It says, explore President George W. Bush's Ocean Action Initiatives. So this is like a, a bird there. We paste the bird right there. Oh, okay, we learned how protected coastal wetlands. There's a piece of trash right here. Oh yeah, marine debris initiatives. Oh, look at all that floating garbage. Talks about the Hurricane Katrina crisis. Says, uh, George W. Bush said, Katrina exposed serious problems in our response and capability at all levels of government. I wanna know what went right and what went wrong. Yeah, it was, it was very shocking. Uh, I remember when that happened, people, uh, people stranded for days in the floods. The, the, the response seemed to be very, very slow. I guess he is acknowledging that it, it didn't go very good. Talking here about the financial crisis, Some other issues such as immigration, social security, and Medicare. 
Oh, I was wondering if they were going to have this here, some of the George W. Bush paintings after uh, after he stopped being president. He took up painting. I know originally he like painted dogs and other animals, and it uh, looks like he did a series where he painted uh, heroes, different people in the uh, in the military that served in the military. And there we have a U.S. flag painted by uh, George W. Bush. There was a handgun given to uh, George W. Bush by a group of veterans. And just FYI, if you're going to give a gun to the president, you know, call his people first, make sure everything's okay, arrange the handoff. Don't just run up and try to hand it to him. This is their temporary exhibit here called Freedom Matters. It says, where does democracy come from? The term democracy comes from two Greek words, demos, the people, and kratia, power or authority. Says the Greek playwright Aristophanes once wrote about the vermilion rope. Says a dyed rope supposedly used to herd large groups of citizens into the assembly. Those that were late or at the edge of the crowds were marked with the red rope and they had to pay a fine for tardiness. You gotta match these freedoms with their category. Let me see, we have the freedom to run for office. I think that's political freedom. Yes! We have uh, access to free and independent media. That is uh, personal freedom? Yes! Let's see. Choose and change your occupation. That is economic freedom. Authoritarian governments. Some examples here like an oligarchy where uh, authority is vested in a small group of people that does not re represent the majority. That's an example would be the, uh, the uh, South Africa during apartheid where the, the whites controlled everything, but the majority of people were black. So a theocracy where a deity is recognized as the supreme leader, such as the Ayatollah's Iran. It's an absolute monarchy, a ruler inherits the power by birth. An absolute monarchy would be France during Louis the, uh, the uh, 14th reign. And uh, yeah, I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think all these, uh, all these authoritarian governments are, are no good. Not a fan of any of these. You have a dictatorship where uh, a dictator comes into power and has absolute controls such as, you know, the worst, the worst government ever, Nazi Germany. And there's types of democratic governments, such as the constitutional monarchy, where a ruler inherits the position, but uh, doesn't actually rule. They let someone else do it, like uh, Victorian England. It says there's two types of democracy, the direct democracy or the representative democracy, where citizens elect the decision makers who act on their behalf. That's, that's us, that's, uh, that's what we do here in the uh, United States. But a direct democracy is when the uh, citizens make the majority of the rules. This was like uh, ancient Athens. Some documents by the founding fathers. Some documents created during reconstruction to kind of, you know, fix some of the mistakes we made earlier on. And here is where we exit through the gift shop with this oh this giant rotating door. Oh, it's like a like a rotating door, but it just has two giant pods in it. So let's step in here. Oh yeah. You know the normal ones are kind of small. This is uh definitely handy here. So we rotate into the gift shop. We got some plushy Air Force Ones in here. And then they have, uh, okay, they have the donkey. Oh, it's a donkey elephant combination. So this is some bipartisanship here. The elephant folds in to the donkey and then you can fold it the other way and the elephant emerges. Oh, what a, what a nice showing of, of bipartisanship here in the uh, George W. Bush gift shop. Bobbleheads here, got both George and Barney. There you go. Get a, get a good bobble going. There, then we got Barney as well. 
Yes, sir. Oh, look at this. It's a Sharpie <laughs> with George W. Bush's signature on it. Yeah, Bush Sharpie. Oh, yeah. So thank you for joining me here today at the George W. Bush Presidential Library. A walk in the past. I, uh, you know, the, the 2001 to 2009, that was, you know, that was uh, me, I was 21 in 2001. So kind of like the beginning of my adulthood there, encapsulated there. A lot of, brought back a lot of memories of things, experienced things that happened during the Bush administration. Uh, if you know of any other presidential libraries, like I'm trying to figure out, think in my head, which ones I haven't been to. I've heard that George H.W. Bush has his own uh, presidential library, uh, George W.'s father. And I think I've been to a lot of them, but if you know of any that I have not visited, any presidential libraries that uh, that I'm missing, leave a comment in the comment section. I would be able to try to visit every single presidential library out there. I don't think every president has one. I think it's, I think the more recent ones do, there is, there's not yet a Donald Trump uh, presidential library, but uh, I think, yeah, I'll, is there an Obama one? I'm trying to think. Now I'm trying to think. I, I've not been to Obama. Does Obama have a presidential library? Interesting. I'll have to look that one up, but uh, thank you so much for you guys watching this video. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun, random stuff. Uh, if uh, you'd like to help support the channel, Consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more. Get your postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, doing personalized messages on Cameo, birthdays, anniversaries, special occasions, or just for fun. If you're interested in that, check the description of the video. And of course, all that goes to help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.